I couldn't believe 35 minutes of previews. And 35 minutes? I don't know if that was the reason that I didn't <laughs> enjoy it as I much. it on the wrong foot. Because the movie itself is two and a half hours. If Dementis didn't have any, where did he have power in this world before he kind of challenged a Mort and Joe? So that was confusing to me. I don't know the time frame, but I'm willing to bet a good half an hour you don't know where she is. or what, It just kind of became about the world. And I'm sure he relied on the fact that people already knew her character. Coming maybe, maybe. from Fury Road, that maybe he felt he didn't have to do a lot of the legwork of getting people invested. And I wouldn't lie, I did pass out once <laughs> during the movie. I was close, near the end. Yeah. I saw Furiosa a few days ago and nice. thought we should chat. Uh, what did you think of it? I liked it a lot. I really enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. I mean, I, I was gonna, I need a caveat. I, it was my birthday when I saw it, so okay. I was in a good mood. Uh, but, and I also haven't seen Fury Road. That was the other thing I wanted to stress because I've seen parts of it and I was going to watch it before I saw Furiosa. Then I read some people who had seen it said, if you haven't seen Fury Road, maybe watch it after. You might enjoy it more. So then I, I and Tiff is showing it in the next week. Mm. I got tickets. So I was like, it's a sign. I'll hold off. But yeah, I enjoyed it. That's good. Yeah, I haven't seen Fury Road either. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I've seen the original, I think I would like to get, I know there's definitely two, if not three Mad Max films with Mel yeah, Gibson. I think that sounds right. right. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, George Miller, he's been doing this for a good 40 plus years. And uh, I, I have seen the trailer of Fury Road and I mean, I was really intrigued by it. Furiosa, Probably not so much. And I, honestly, I when I say not so much, I meant the trailer. Yeah. Um, I I'm didn't even there. know. I didn't even know that they were connected. Oh really? Um, yeah. Until until I saw a trailer where she's shaved and the face is all painted, and I'm like, oh, yeah. is that the same <laughs> character? Um. But yeah, no. It. I. I wish I could say I. I did like the movie, but I don't know if it was. I, I was in um, Orlando and we went to see it and it was oh, fun. I couldn't believe thirty five minutes of previews. Thirty five minutes. Thirty five minutes of previews. That really I don't know if that was the reason that I didn't <laughs> enjoy it as I much. Bet it on the wrong foot. Because the movie itself is two and a half hours. Long. Right? Yeah. So having thirty five minutes of uh, previews wasn't helpful. But visually, I mean it was Amazing, but I think one thing that I walked away with the best was what well, that I liked a lot. Chris Hemsworth's performance, I think mm -hmm. he nailed it, mm -hmm. uh, and he thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, yeah. And also the the woman who played well, the younger version, the youngest version of Furiosa, and yeah. the woman that played her mom. I thought yes. those three stood out for me. What about you? Uh, I also. It took me a minute to decide if I liked Chris Hemsworth, but I landed on that. I did. Um, and I really thought the actress who played young Furiosa was phenomenal. I was, I was taken aback for so long because they looked so similar that I was like, are they have to be related? And then I read later online that it was CG that they mixed their faces together. Her, uh, the young actress and Anya Taylor Joy's faces together. And I was like, okay, that makes a lot of sense because Anya Taylor-Joy has such a unique look that I was like, for a child actress to have such a similar one, I was like, either are related or this isn't as special effects. And it was special effects. But I really liked her. Um, and also the mom who was recently in um, Anyone But You uh, with Sydney. Okay. That was her uh, first role. So I was like, oh, there she is again. Uh, but yeah, she was great, and that whole sequence in the beginning, I loved. Um, yeah, with her. yeah, I'm actually intrigued, but probably not so much with this idea of using visual effects to make, you know, the the younger and older version look. It, I think it's fascinating, 
but at the same time, it kind of just the fact they just mentioned them like, oh, you know that, that, that I, I think <laughs> took away from the away. performance a little. Yeah, a lot I think fair. because that's not that's not fair to the actor or the actress because you're literally changing their expressions and that doesn't really reflect on their talent, good or bad, either way. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, but take it from. I mean, I guess if you're looking at like Planet of the Apes, they're putting it on top of, but I don't know how yeah. much they're changing her facial performance with Anya Taylor-Joy or more just mixing some of the features That's to make point. her look more like her. Like just editing yeah. clips a little, the eyes, just because to make her look. To me, the only reason it bothered me a little was because later on when Anya Taylor-Joy shows up and they the the Amorden Joe's crew doesn't recognize her or anyone doesn't recognize her as the little girl who escaped earlier on in the film. I was taken aback. I was like, how did you that's Anya Taylor Joy? How did how are you not connecting the dots? Yeah. That took me out of it a little. I was like, you're just gonna stare right at her and not wonder if that's the character from earlier. But anyways, that's a nitpick. Yeah, no, I think you have a valid point about the Planet of the Apes uh, motion capture technology, but the flip side of that is people, I think, nowadays know that that's motion capture technology, so yes. they know that it's a, a, a human being being replaced by an ape completely, like from top to bottom. Right. But in this in this case, I bet you 90% of the people didn't even know, yeah, don't one. even know, right? Yeah. Uh, but having said that... Um, one thing that I kind of found was again these are could be a, overall I really enjoyed the film as a form of entertainment. Mm -hmm. I think it had some interesting scenes and some great performances. Um, but one thing that kind of took me away from the character's journey was, especially in the first um, few acts, right? I think there were five yeah. acts or five chapters. Yeah, chapters um, didn't really work for me. Yeah, yeah, they didn't work for me either. Yeah. Um and uh, you you kind of lose track of Furiosa like she's not even in several scenes in the first couple of chapters and you're she's like not okay, in the what? first hour well yeah. oh, you mean young Fury you mean young Fury like you see her in the beginning yeah and then I don't know the time frame but I'm willing to bet a good half an hour you don't know where she is or what. it just kind of became about the world yeah um. But you kind of maybe that's the reason I feel that I wasn't really involved because that character yeah. that you're supposed to be relating to or you're seeing the world through her eyes mm -hmm. wasn't there for a good chunk. That's true. I see that. I think I was lost in the world building a little a little bit more. I enjoyed it. I loved I liked seeing it felt epic in that way where it kind of wasn't just following one it felt like you had different characters. You had some different storylines going on. Like yeah. I think like my favorite blockbusters and epics and you know, they, they've got multiple things happening. And so I did enjoy that aspect of it, especially since I realized we were going to be with a child version of the character for so long, which also maybe didn't help what you were kind of stressing. Mm it's hard to kind of get into the perspective of a character when it's a child for an hour, when you know that's not really the character you're gonna be following. Um, and so that I kind of bothered me a little bit, but I enjoyed learning about this world and maybe it's cause I didn't know much about it going into it, but um, I was more confused about Dementis and mm. Um, um, I'm still trying to get his name. A Morden Joe, like in uh, what the different the guy with the mask, the guy with the mask. Okay. What the different territories, like they. I agree. Like, you know what I mean? What like where if Dementis would, didn't have any, where did he have power in this world before he kind of challenged a Mor a Morden Joe? So that was confusing to me, but I did enjoy kind of setting up that world and that more complex um world building but i think probably george miller got a little lost in that and distracted from making it actually furiosa and not the mad max part of it 
Yeah, I, I, I agree. And I think that the confusion was there for me as well. Um, just as to what what is the objective of these characters and yeah. these different, like, you know, the wasteland, the gas, uh, was it the Down. gas factory, gas yeah. town, and all those places. And I wouldn't lie, I did pass out once <laughs> during the movie. I was close, near the end. Yeah. Um, and I think I missed a major major action sequence uh, I, I but yeah it was oh. i think the two, two it wasn't the convoy hour. right it was it that was, was not great... no there was one great sequence that i did see that in was the middle with um yeah with, yeah but in the very final the final just before the finale there was something that certainly happened i missed parts of it i mean i remember in the, because it was just it, I wasn't connected to the character and I I I felt that George Miller tried really and look it's really hard it's not fair to criticize because I'll get to the um other part of the film it was not an easy film to make from a production standpoint yeah, right from what I've read but yeah. yeah I mean even looking at it like but going before I go to that is just it was just that I wasn't invested into the character and I think he George Miller tried really really hard for her for the character to be very serious and non-verbal which kind of gives you more interesting points about the character but again yeah having Furiosa not there for a good chunk um i think it it did more harm than it did good and i think that's why people are kind of divided on it that's fair I and mean, i'm sure he relied on the fact that people already knew her character coming hey, maybe. from fury road that maybe he felt he didn't have to do a lot of the legwork of getting people invested because they've seen her but for people like you and me who haven't seen her in that movie we don't have that familiarity and so it was kind of starting from scratch from us but i can see him kind of forgetting about us and focusing on the people who've seen it but yeah. i did i was i'm trying to think about how i felt about being invested in her character i was it definitely invested um but again, now I just, I don't know if that was because of what I know about the character already and Charlize mm -hmm. Theron's character, because I've seen parts of Fury Road, or if I genuinely felt invested in this version. I'd have to see it again. That's interesting. Yeah. I um, I mean, going to the, the production itself, I haven't seen the making of, but yeah. I mean, looking, looking at the film, you know, obviously there are visual effects there, but majority of the film looks pretty authentic i know fury road was very authentic from what i had read i haven't seen it uh, but to shoot in water and desert is not an easy task i yeah. i actually spoke to um john seal who shot the english patient right um yes. i don't know if you have seen english patient I haven't seen it but i know it. okay um <laughs> before your time uh, <laughs> a lot of them <laughs> A lot of movies um, are one of the best. Yeah, it was it was not an easy film to shoot in desert. Desert is, I mean, you know, sandstorms and uh, uh, people get tired very quickly. The sun, the heat, and everything. Yeah. Um, and it's it's to be able to pull something like that off. I mean, English Patient is a complete opposite. It's a very you know slow and calm movie. Dramatic. This is completely opposite. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not. And to be able to pull those things off uh, in the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, kudos, kudos to the team that did it because it's not easy. Even if, because nobody turned, nobody wants to make a bad movie, right? Like, yeah, it, sometimes good movies don't end up getting a hit. But remarkable work in terms of production, for sure. Yeah, uh, I think may I it got me thinking. I was I've heard the I haven't seen a lot of behind the scenes about this one, but I've read about Dune part two and a lot of the mm. cast talking about how draining and exhausting shooting those seek like that half that majority of that movie is the desert and yeah. they were just talking about how draining it was and i've heard anya taylor joy talk about how exhausting this shoot was uh just filming in those conditions so it's it's a lot i wonder if audiences are desert out and that's why they're not coming to see furiosa yeah. as much because it's well, it, it, yeah. Well, that raises an interesting question, right? Like I was reading. Um, so one of the things that Mad Max has done, uh, again, referencing back to um, uh, one of the editors of uh, 
Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, I think it's called. Yes. Um, uh, Richard Francis, um, Bruce, he's one of the editors. He's edited like Shawshank Redemption, The Rock, all those oh, wonderful wow. films. Um, and I was talking to him about Mad Max Thunderdome, and we, you know, I I I mentioned to him that it just seems like to me that the, have you seen Hook with Robin Williams and Dustin yes. Hoffman? Yes. Okay. So you know, similar outfits, similar kind of world, and yeah. and he raised a very good point. He said that, and I think he's absolutely spot on that Mad Max set up a precedent for like rugged and destroyed vehicles and worlds and, for sure. and movies to come. I mean, it definitely started a trend for sure. For sure. Yeah, it's they're even a they're even a I think. I haven't seen it yet. Obviously, it's months out, but I think they're doing even like Mad Max, Mad Max references in the new Deadpool movie. It looks like they're gonna do like a Mad Max style like race sequence. Oh, I and see. so you can you can with all these like different vehicles and and so you can see it, it's had influence in many different they many different movies and shows have referenced that sure. kind of like different uh, souped up vehicles racing in the desert. Fast yeah, and yeah. so obviously not the desert, but well, actually, you know what? You mentioned Fast and Furious. I can see that. Yeah, at a not intentionally, maybe just subconsciously. You know, like yeah, for sure. Like this. Um, but Mad Max, this Memorial Day, like Memorial Day weekend, is supposed to be like a huge deal, right? Like it's on mm-hmm. this week. It's, it launches the summer um, schedule and summer box office and everything. And yeah. two movies opened up. Uh, which I the other one I don't even know about Garfield. I don't even know there's a Garfield movie coming out. Um, <laughs> Garfield, I mean, that was that was that was shock to me. I saw <laughs> I saw a photo of Chris Hemworth and Garfield. I'm like, did Chris Hemworth voice Garfield? Like, what is this? No. And then I realized it was Furiosa and wrong um, Chris. Garfield. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, what well, I, I mean, five day weekend for Furiosa being 31 million, I think it was, which yeah, is like. Okay. Which is extremely low, even for a regular three-day weekend. Yeah. Why do you think that is? A few reasons. One I read online uh, from a, a YouTuber I watch often. Um, she mentioned that it could be like Memorial Day weekend is a big family day weekend or a big family weekend, and it's mm. uh, at least in the states, it's I think P- 14A or 18A here, but in the states it's R, and so an R-rated movie on fan on memorial day weekend when a lot of kids are wanting to go see movies with their families is it necessarily gonna draw as many viewers like r-rated movies are always gonna draw less of an audience than a pg movie um i think that's a big deal i think people are also kind of sick of um prequels sequels i think we're getting to that stage where franchise think, remakes and all franchise that. i think they just if you look at what people were interested in earlier on in the year it didn't do no movie has done gangbusters this year not, not one movie but civil war did well it was original people were mm-hmm. interested it was topical um dune part two while a franchise a very old franchise that hasn't been remade a thousand times granted like mad max hasn't either but i think it's it doesn't have that same hype around it and i think dune part two coming out a month and a half ago two months ago did undercut it a little bit um i think there are many reasons like that that just kind of combined and i think quality the trailers like you mentioned just didn't look that great for furiosa i don't think there's one person i could show a trailer furiosa to that isn't in involved in movies or likes to go see every movie that would be like i'm going to see that opening weekend because yeah. the trailer looks phenomenal i think it it looked iffy from the yeah. trailers. no i it that's yeah. true and i think what really would the fact that you said that it's r-rated over there it's uh, 14 accompanied here if that is a factor then the film should not drop have a huge drop in the second weekend, right? Like it should just no. have like a third, thirty percent or twenty five percent or thirty three percent drop. Yep. But if it drops below fifty percent, 
then yeah, definitely. I I I think it, I think it was more than that. I think it was a combination of things, and I do also yeah. think one thing you mentioned was Dune, too, that came out what a month ago, March, beginning of March. So like aside aside from franchisee, the R rating and all that, I do also think now that you mention it. I think people probably saw Dune too, and then they saw a Furiosa trailer, like another desert movie. Yeah, really, do I need, we, we do I need to go there? Do I really yeah. need to go see a desert movie again? Yeah, um, I think that could be one main reason, right? Uh, I I think so. I think if it was a few months later in the summer, it might have done slightly better. I don't know. We don't know. But at the same time, I mean, no matter how similar a film is, if it's not that great it's not that great like if it's great then no matter what nothing can you know if it clicks with people if it taps into that psyche mm -hmm. um i just didn't i yeah i just didn't feel connected to any like i didn't feel for anybody except yeah. the opening sequence the mother trying to save for you like that was the yeah. part that was the best part in the entire film in my view yeah um I mean, I felt, I agree. It definitely was my, that and the end, which I don't want to give away. The I I personally loved the final confrontation between her. Yeah, that was pretty cool too. Yeah. I thought it was cool. I thought it was different. I, I liked that it was scaled down and not some giant battle. We've had a million action sequences by that point. I liked that that one-on-one -on -one confrontation. And then the payoff, there's, there's a, a running... Uh, thing with Furiosa and a seed she's given and I thought the payoff yeah. for that was fantastic and just not expected it had by that point the amount of times it was brought up I was like if they don't do something really cool with that seed I'm gonna it's over and they delivered on that so I, I yeah. appreciated that um and I, I guess I was, I, I think I was more emotionally invested in her character. I think when she was being traded to a Morden Joe, um, I was, and I think I was really disturbed in her time and that, not that she was in it for long with the wives of a Morden Joe, that part was in, a little intense, but I think I wasn't, I guess maybe just going in from it from the get-go, I was like, I want to see some action sequences. I want to see some like epic yeah. trucks and some cool visuals. And I think they kind of undersold me on the character when we went into it. And they said, I think a week or two before they came out saying Anya Taylor-Joy has 38 lines in the movie. And I was like, oh, okay. So oh, really, I don't yeah. even, now that makes, that makes sense because she barely yeah. speaks. Yeah, that she has like no dialogue in the movie and they prefaced it a couple weeks before. So I saw that, went into it kind of expecting, okay, she's not gonna. And I saw people talk about the first hour being kind of slower. And then when I realized Anya Taylor-Joy wasn't coming in for the first hour, I was like, okay, it's all clicking now. See, I didn't even know any of those things. And I, I when some when a character has 38 lines in a movie, mm -hmm. to me, that's, that's a character that you should be heavily invested into because they're not telling you what to think. They're making you yep. feel what you should think or shouldn't think. Mm -hmm. And I still didn't, right? So, but, you know, um, I wonder what the future holds. I don't know if there is another movie that they're planning or they were planning what's yeah. going to happen. <laughs> Before. <the box. laughs> yeah, like because I think the budget for this one was $163 million. Um, I think this is before great. marketing. Um, so the closer to yeah so we'll see how i mean i don't know if he has another i don't even know how fury roads ends so yeah if there is a story after that or if there's a story i wouldn't mind seeing how um chris hemsworth character came to be where he is i mean that would be interesting but that's not mad yeah. max right that's yeah that's where i'm like i think i'm done with furiosa i think she's good at least yeah. this like, i would love to see Charlize theron as furiosa again personally like if we got a sequel, but that's where I think talking back to our other point, I think we're, I think we just need to take a break from these franchises as, as fun as they are. I think, I think no, audience are, start, are starting to speak that it's like, unless it's something original, like Barbie, where it's taking a franchise and kind of doing something new with it, just doing a prequel or a sequel, it just isn't enough to draw people in anymore. So yeah, I'm, no, I, 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 I couldn't agree more. I mean, there's there's so many sequels and 
you know, spin-offs and franchise stuff coming in. You know, I just saw the trailer. If you haven't taken a look at it, that looks it looks quite interesting with uh, Brad Pitt and George Clooney. Um, oh, uh, wolf. w wolves, wolves, yeah, wolves, wolves, wolves with an S, not not with a V E S. Um, that that looks good. I mean, there's a whole bunch of movies that I made a list of that I want to see and we want to cover on the podcast. I mean, yeah, um, long. I oh, you mentioned that last time. The horror. There's some Inside Out two. Yeah. I want to see inside too. Um, there's a Netflix series coming up, which will be quite interesting, called Terminator Zero. So it's like an anime style of, basically, it's it takes place between certain number of films. I don't know which oh, one. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, Quiet Place Day One looks good. Okay. I'm looking forward to the new Alien film because it's directed by the same guy who did Don't Breathe, which was yes. an amazing film. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen the second uh, Don't Breathe yet. It's okay, just um, stick with the first one. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Wild Robot, that looks really good. That's supposed to yes! be really good. Yes, that is one of my most anticipated of the year. The animation looks beautiful. Yeah, and then Beetlejuice 2, I just saw the trailer. That looks great. Um, I mean, I, I saw it when I was 13, I'd like to guess. Um, no, and, yeah. you know, love love that film. And then yeah. um, Joker 2. Uh, that would be really, really cool too. I Looks think. Really good. Very excited yeah. for that. There's a lot. What of... about you? Uh, I, even though I just took a dump on sequels and prequels, I am a Marvel guy, so I am excited for Deadpool and Wolverine. Either way, um, I'll be there Thursday night to see it. Um, Inside Out two. I've seen the first. I actually got to see the first thirty five minutes of it. Um, I already right. think it's one of probably Pixar's I didn't love Inside Out one but I saw the first the yeah. uh, like I said, the first 35 minutes and sold on Inside Out yeah. too um and yeah I think there's some good horror coming out this summer that looks original there's a movie coming out with Nick Nicolas Cage called Long Legs that looks um really disturbing I haven't seen that trailer right yet but I've heard they disturbing. they've released like throughout the past few months they released like 20 second like teasers that were probably some of the scariest marketing I've ever seen. Then I saw recently they released like a two minute trailer, but I don't want to watch it because I don't want to know anymore. Um, and um, I'm trying to think. Well, there's the M. Night Shyamalan movie coming out with Josh, the Josh Harnett. Yeah, I don't know the actor in it off, but Trap, right? Uh, that's yeah. In, yeah. And then here. his daughter is making a movie too. Yep. Um, that comes out, I think, in a week. Or in beginning of June, the Watchers. Who, the Watcher. Who's distributing that? The Watchers. Oh, you know. Just wrote, um, just wrote it. Oh, it's fine. I'll pay. I'll find out. I was just kind of mm -hmm. curious. Warner Brothers. Warner, Warner Brothers. Brothers. Yeah, I, I would be interested in seeing that because that. Uh, I mean, Dakota Fanning is a great actress, and the trailer sure. does look interesting. Yeah, I think the year is looking up. I hope I hope people get back to the theaters. I don't think there's a big event movie like Barbenheimer that's going to bring people back, but we'll see if Deadpool and Wolverine does it. I don't I don't know. I'm not even confident in that <laughs> after yeah. Marvel's recent performance. Well, I'm not a superhero fan at all, so I have no idea. Right, I know. I remember that actually. Um, you know, I'm I'll probably see you at the Bad Boys screening. I don't know if you're going to the same one on June 3rd. Uh, I'm not. I actually okay. have only seen one Bad Boys movie. I got to catch up. Yeah, it's. I'm not even looking forward to the Bad Boys movie, <laughs> but I'm just going to go see it. I love the first one because it was yeah. very under budget. I mean, there are some crazy stories about how they made it and everything. Right. And the second one I enjoyed. Third one I haven't seen. Um, I, that I, was the one I, that came I, out in 2020, I think, right? People like, like that one. I've been hearing great things about the new Bad Boys, though. So hopefully you enjoy it. People yeah, I mean, I know. I, I, I just want to see something. Oh, you know what I want to see? Sorry, I, I'm kind of going off tangent. No, now. no, I love it. We're talking about meaningful films. There's, I think I may have said this to you before in the last podcast we did together. Um, Tuesday. Uh is that from A24. Dreyfus? Yes. Yes. I want to see that. that. I can't wait to see that. I'm yeah. looking forward to. Yeah, me too. Did you see the one she did 
last year you hurt my feelings no i have to see it but that's on I, prime I and gr a great movie especially for any creative out there who makes work and shows it to people it's really good and relatable and um so i think that was also a 24 or elevation maybe but okay if it's a 24 so, i'll watch it because yeah I love their stuff. I yeah love their stuff. so that's a, that's a good one too awesome man yeah that's awesome this has been great thank you so much um thank you for having me